Thanks very much, Kate. I'm just going to swap the slides over. Uh, so hopefully you can all see uh, the, the homepage um, slide for the, the context. So I'm, I'm not going to speak for very long. I've just been asked to really introduce Richard and, and some of the context for the Climate Change Risk Assessment Evidence Report as a whole. Um, and as Kate said, the, the Committee on Climate Change are coordinating um, all of the work that, that's leading into the, the evidence report. Uh, and I'll just talk you through a few slides for those of you who are new to the process about what the CCRA is, um, the different components, and then uh, a bit of an update on some new stuff that's coming out tomorrow. So you're getting a, a bit of a sneak preview. Um, so this, this rather busy chart is uh, something we're, we're putting together for the evidence report to explain the statutory cycle. Uh, and what it's showing is that um, the Climate Change Act, which was passed in 2008, puts into place a five yearly cycle of national climate change risk assessments, uh, followed by adaptation programmes, um, both for the UK government that, that covers England uh, for most matters, and then each of the devolved administrations also does its own national adaptation programme. And the idea really that the Climate Change Act was, was um, trying to put in place was that there's a cycle of learning from each climate change risk assessment into each national adaptation programme. And the, the flow diagram really is just showing you that each CCRA cycle has led into uh, a, a policy cycle and then a reporting cycle. Um, and there's two sets of reporting. So one is that the Climate Change Act gives uh, powers to the government to require adaptation reports from different organisations, that's called the adaptation reporting power, and that feeds both into the CCRA and the national adaptation programmes. And then the CCC, the Committee on Climate Change, has, has two roles under the Act. The first is to advise the government on the CCRA, the risk assessment, uh, and the second is to report on those policy programmes to say how far we think adaptation uh, is progressing around the UK. Uh, and then we flip into each subsequent cycle. So once there's been a risk assessment and a, a NAP, a National Adaptation Programme, uh, and a progress report, we then flip into the next cycle. Uh, and the blue rings just show you that we've already completed two cycles of risk assessments and national adaptation programs uh, in 2012 and 2017. And now we're into the third cycle and, and Rich is going to talk through the preparations for the technical chapters, which really form the bulk of the risk assessment for this third cycle. And then that will feed through into a third round of, of national adaptation programs uh, and a subsequent progress report from us, both for England and Scotland. The next slide is just to um, give you some background on the previous climate change risk assessment. So as I mentioned, the first climate change risk assessment was produced in 2012 and the second in 2017. Um, and it actually comprises of two separate reports. And this is just the way the Climate Change Act was set up. There has to be uh, an independent evidence report, which in 2012 was produced by uh, a, a whole consortium of organisations led by the consultancy HR Wallingford. And that, that, all of that evidence fed into a government report which really set out the government's view of the key risks and opportunities based on that evidence that had been collated and both of those were laid before Parliament in January 2012. The second cycle was a little bit different in that um, in order for us to give our advice the government actually asked the Committee on Climate Change to produce the independent uh, assessment report which was the role that HR Wallingford did in 2012. And we produced our, our independent evidence report in 2016 um, and then the government laid its, its government report, which is the blue report on the end, in, in January 2017. And both of those are available at the links below uh, if any of you would like to take a look at them. And what we're going to focus on today is one of the four sets of outputs that we get uh, from, from the risk assessment evidence report. So Richard, as, as Kay has mentioned, is the technical uh, director for the technical chapters um, and really they form the bulk of the actual assessment. So they provide the detailed analysis that underpins both the, the identification of risks and opportunities, but also the analysis of the size of those risks and then something that we call urgency. So we actually give something called urgency scores to each of the risks and opportunities that we look at and, and Rich is going to explain in more detail how we do that and what that means. Um, the evidence for that is drawn from a whole range of literature and, and new research that's been done as well and again Richard will take you through that. 
I just wanted to flag that there are also three other sets of outputs that we're producing alongside the technical chapters. So there's uh, a group of research projects um, that are being done through funding from the research councils and DEFRA and the devolved administrations. There's seven of those and they're actually being published tomorrow. Um, so I'll, I'll just briefly mention them on the next slide. They're feeding into the technical chapters, which uh, as we said, will be written um, probably by finishing around next spring and they'll then feed into a set of summaries given the size of the technical chapters, you know, this will run into well over a thousand pages of analysis. So obviously we need to do a bit of a job of summarizing all of that, make it more accessible. So we'll be producing summaries for each of the four countries of the UK, and then also different theme areas. So flooding, water availability, business, and so on. Uh, and then all of that work is leading into the CCC's statutory advice to government. Um, and we produce that advice through something called the synthesis report. So that draws on all of uh, Richard's team's work and, and the work for the summaries and the research projects, but it forms the committee's view of uh, the most urgent risks and opportunities and, and the priorities for action in the next five year period. And then finally, I just wanted to flag that tomorrow we're going to be uh, launching a new website to host all of this information. So it's called the UK Climate Risk website. Um, it's going to look like this as, as the screenshot. So you'll be able to click on the link at the bottom of the slide from tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon and be able to go into the new climate risk website. And we'll also be publishing our seven research projects um, that we've been doing over the last couple of years, actually, to, to feed into the technical chapters. So there'll be new projections of flood risk and water availability for the UK up to the end of the century. There's a project on how behaviour uh, in communities, businesses and by individuals helps to moderate risk, if any of you are interested in behaviour change. There's a project on how risk uh, cascades through infrastructure, the built environment and the natural environment. Um, so not just within a particular sector, but how different sectors interact uh, in response to a particular hazard. There's also one on thresholds um, and non-linear change in the natural environment, for those of you who are interested in, in that side. Uh, and we have some underlying data as well. So we've produced a set of socioeconomic dimensions to underpin all of the CCRA research and, and the technical chapters so that they're all using the same socioeconomic based data. That's been published for a while, but that's also going up on the website. And finally, there's a project about uh, improving the accessibility of the risk assessment. So very, very sort of communications focused um, and that will be published tomorrow as well. So please do go and have a look at, at the website uh, when it's up tomorrow and hopefully you will find that a useful resource to, to see um, the updates as, as we produce the evidence report. Uh, and also it gives you quite a bit of background on, on the risk assessment process um, and links through to both the UK climate projections uh, and the government's national adaptation programmes as well. And finally, I just wanted to mention that, that this is a, see a huge collaborative exercise. We've, we've now actually got over 130 different organisations contributing uh, to the evidence report as a whole. And if any of you are not currently involved but would like to be, there's also going to be a sign up page on the new website that you can go to, uh, fill in your details, and then we'll, we'll start sending you updates on the risk assessment as well. Um, so do just let us know or let me know directly as well uh, if any of you would like to be involved. So that's all I was going to say. I'll hand over to Rich now to take you through um, the detail behind the technical chapters and, and the method for the risk assessment.